Hi, this is Lady Lex UK and here is another tutorial for Project Spark and I've been given a request to make a 2D space shooter tutorial so it was my first attempt at making something like this and this is what I've come up with I'm not particularly good at my own game. <laughs> and then we go into round three. And this can continue and continue and continue as much as you like. There we go. So how is it done? As you can see, um, the the landscape is not the black one. Here is a copy of that black moving uh, landscape, and here it is uh, not moving. Uh, if I go into the empty biome, you'll see I use the asteroid pack, and I just made it black to create a, a spacey star field. You could use other things. Um, experiment a bit with the, the biomes, you never know what you might uh, discover. Uh, the standard biome I've used is this one, which is the icy one. Uh, you can just have it on the default, it doesn't have to be uh, anything at all. It can be a default one. I just put it into the ice one to make sure I got it. Right, so here is our arena. I've put some uh, walls up just to give me an idea of the area. Um, if you were doing this, you'd probably do a full wall all the way around, uh, depending on what sort of movement controls you're using, and I'll go into that in a minute. So up here somewhere, a little tiny little camera gizmo. Uh, inside this camera, if I can grab it, I can't grab it, there we go. Let's go up there, there we are. Inside this camera is a first person camera with controls, just point it down at your area and make sure the camera looks uh, pretty much what you want. Um, it's pretty difficult actually to get it so I can see, show you what it's looking at. Uh, there you go, that's what you can see in that top, top um, centre there, you can see that's what the camera can see, that's the area uh, that you're looking down on. So put your camera where you uh, want it to look down uh, on your game and everything is going to move uh, along the floor so you imagine that so up is really along in this game okay so down here um, I've got uh, my spaceship uh, and I've just used a jetpack for this nothing spectacular you could probably make something much much nicer than this but that's what I've used uh, I've just got a highlight in there in its brain otherwise it's uh, an empty brain and it's attached to this logic cube and this is the logic cube that's going to be my movement control so when you place your uh, logic cube in the world put a, an ordinary movement brain in it see which way it's moving and that will determine your arena uh, so make sure you get it moving in the, the directions that you expect it to move okay so let's have a look at its brain now you, you'd sit that like that and uh, everything's going to hit this white cube because it's uh, invisible, nobody's going to see it. It's going to look as if it's hitting your ship. Right, and let's have a look at its brain. Okay, so once team equals team one. Uh, when A is pressed, shoot an arcane missile with damage of 100. This will make sure that the, your alien ships are destroyed in one shot. And play the coding blast noise everywhere with a bit of overlapping. When you move your left stick, move with strafing. This will give you the uh, look of uh, it moving always in one direction. If I remove that, and we'll just test that now so you can see the difference. Uh, you will now move in the direction. It's a slightly different look and slightly more difficult to do. Um, but there you go, that, that you can move it. 
um, around. But if you want a sort of more Space Invaders thing, then uh, you would do that. If you want it to be... Sorry. I highlighted this spaceship. There we go. Um, if you want it to be even more uh, Space Invader-like, then you might want to restrict the left stick movement to left and right direction. Uh, and uh, this method here, you've got um, a stop at uh, various points so you won't go outside the arena. Like I say, if you were going to put a wall in, then that will do the same effect, just an invisible wall. But otherwise, this is how to do it using vectors. The problem with this, of course, is um, it's very specific to left stick left, left stick right. So if the player is even slightly off and is putting their stick up slightly to slightly up and to the left, it's not going to be as responsive. So uh, bear that in mind uh, if you're going to use this method. But left and right for a Space Invaders type game uh, would make sense here. And then you've got the up and the down direction as well. Uh, I find it a little bit sticky, but um, it's up to you. It's up to you. Um, I think I prefer move with strafing uh, instead. And, and a wall. So that's basically it for the movement of your spaceship. Now let's have a look at the movement of your um, aliens. Uh, here is my alien uh, spaceship here. It's just a grenade with a Taurus running around it in the Taurus brain. It centers itself to the Asimarine center and then it turns. And inside uh, my alien is just coloring situation. So it makes it's the Taurus white. And then for each round, it changes the color of the hologram uh, by changing the solid color and the hologram color to the same. And it's a sort of a darker version of what you want. And that gets you uh, a nice bright yellow, for example, there. And this one is all like dirty green. It's actually a nice bright green when it goes into hologram. So I've done it a different color for each round. Um, you can do it whatever you like. You can have different alien spacecrafts if you want. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Okay, the path it is going to follow as it when it's created. Uh, this path one is sort of a wiggly line. It goes all the way down uh, the screen to the bottom. If you want it so that they can actually crash into your spacecraft, make sure that the, the end of the path is lower than the player's spacecraft. And then it can crash into you. Okay, let's have a look at the brain of the actual movement. I've popped it in this beacon here. I did have it in a logic cube, but it wouldn't fire for some reason. Um, I think there's the fire point on the logic cube is a bit um, is not good. So for for some reason it wouldn't fire. So it, it would fire when it was a beacon. So I've left it as a beacon. When you move, you move on the relative path of the global current path. Now we're going to set a global current path in our uh, game cube. But um, it's going to move on relative path. That means it's not going to move exactly on the path in its position. It's going to move that movement, but wherever it starts from. And when it bumps the global player, if it's invulnerable, it won't do anything. Otherwise, it'll kill it. And when it starts to be dead, then the global enemies are decremented by one. And... Uh, every 1.5 seconds it's going to shoot uh, this FX gizmo in the direction of north and this sets a vector variable for its starting position so it knows where it started from it says it's team number two and when the path is complete it's going to create itself at the uh, start position again and then destroy itself so it looks as if it's going back up to the top but it's actually um, being destroyed at the bottom and being created again at the top and then it's going to play this sort of droney noise uh, while it's still alive so the sound of that, that drone will reduce as the uh, amount of uh, aliens you've got in the world uh, are destroyed until there's no alien noise at all here's the second path it's, it's different to the other one in that it goes down and then comes back up and goes back down if you um the the path properties I've got it on position mover mode I've got it on a curve 2d orientation and linear movement and for this one 
um, is exactly the same. Fixed orientation instead linear. Okay, so instead of 2D, it's fixed. That means um, it will travel down the path facing the same direction all the time. That's why, so it doesn't fire in the wrong direction, it's always firing in the correct direction, so it's always facing the same way. Right, okay, so there is our alien and our path. Here is our projectile. This is what the enemy fires, so it says when it is projectile and you bump the global player, then kill it. Simple as that. Right, here is our GameCube then. This is where all the magic happens. So, we start off, we're going to call page three. Uh, and page three is uh, a start round. This is going to create our enemies, but I'll go back to that when, uh, when we get to it. Uh, okay, so we we'll set our number of lives. I've set it at six. You can have it as well, many you like. Then for each of those lives, I'm going to display um, in a turquoise colour that Astro Jump pad. It's not going to look exactly right because it's obviously a different orientation, but you can use whatever symbol you like to represent your alien spaceship lives, or you can do this in any way. Then I'm going to paint my terrain with material slot 13. So I'm going to replace ev all everything that's in material slot 16 with material slot 13. So I'm changing from that ice to the uh, nice blackness. And then um, my global player is going to be that logic cube, that player logic cube there at the position of that player logic cube. Now this is the, the, the dying part. So when started to not global player, so when the, there's no global player in the world, dying equals true. When dying equals true, uh, decrement your lives by one. And your global player is now invulnerable. And if lives are greater than zero, carry on, else switch to page two, which is our game over. Uh, countdown of two, started to global player equals create logic cube at logic cube position so we re recreating our player again and then we say dying equals false so this is a resurrection this is where we're, we're creating a new um, character and um, we're removing one of his lives at the top right hand corner there then we're going to say once after a countdown time of two, global round equals one. So we're going to start the round after a countdown time of two. Obviously, you can put anything you like in between here and here. Um, some music or whatever to say that the, the round is about to start. When the global round is two is one, then we're going to set our global enemies to four. We're going to set our global current path to be path one. And we're going to say we're going to start the round. Then countdown time of two frames. So um, we need this because we don't want it to, to do it automatically because there are no enemies to start off with. So just to make sure that we don't accidentally go no enemies immediately to this, we're just going to give it a two frame wait before it looks. And then global enemies equal to zero. Then round two starts. And then we go to global round two. And we're going to paint the terrain uh, material slot 12 is going to replace material slot 13 and that's our moving material make sure it's moving in the correct direction uh, for for your game and then after and uh, i'm going to display round two for five seconds and then after five seconds we're going to paint the terrain with the back again to the black the black star scape and then we're going to set our current path to be path two, our global enemies back to being four, and then we're going to say start round is true. Exactly the same as before, countdown timer in two, enemies equals zero, global round equals three. And then we go to global round three, etc, etc. So we can go on and on and on. I've gone back to uh, path one, you could also you could click path for two, etc, etc. Right, page two is our game over. 
for each of all the objects visible equals false so uh, we're going to make all our spaceships and everything invisible and we're going to display the game over and then for five seconds we do a, a, a count this is actually um, the end game brain from the uh, game over on timer or so you just uh, add that brain in here and just alter it to, to suit and then after three seconds it's going to actually finish the game right this is our start round so when start round started to global enemy equals create that beacon at position position one position two uh, that should say position three let me change that Ah, oh, it's position three up. This is this is this is something you've got to watch. Make sure you've named everything correctly, otherwise you'll it'll look like you've done something wrong when you haven't. Right, there we go. Position three, position. Uh, global enemy four equals create at position four, and then start round equals false. Now, if you want different enemies for different rounds, then you just put a specify in here and start round when global round equals two then and then you put all of these as child line there we go so you you can you can specify uh, different types of enemies you can create multiple enemies uh, with multiple options on them and that's basically it obviously there's nothing on page four there we go so there it is i recommend you create a debug co uh, cube here is my debug cube at the moment it is displaying whether or not i'm dying or not uh before it was displaying uh the round number for me uh you can just turn those off uh or I recommend uh, you just turn their brains off so that they don't display your debug codes. But um, it's always a good idea to check to make things, make sure things are working by creating one of these and just to display whatever variable you need to see is working. And there you go. It's a little complex, but also a little simple. Um, it will take a while for you to get that working correctly. Paths are an uh, awkward thing to use. But if you follow what I've done here, you should be okay. So enjoy uh, working on that. Thank you for watching and keep sparking.